Number 5 of 16 cassettes from The Waiting on God, August 22, 23, 1984, at the Indianapolis Hilton. We're close enough to their heart. It's like a ball game. She said, that shall be my most treasured earthly possession. If I can have on tape what I've been hearing you give us for days. Now, where have I met anyone that had that much in education and knew what that was? Seldom. Because she was very brilliant. When you speak four or five languages, you qualify to be a genius. She lectures at Cambridge. She's a very gifted person. When she hears our people tell about seeing the Alps in the snow, well, she had told us, now I have to go back now in the previous June and July to tell you that she told us, she says, Reverend Mrs. Helm, Tina, when you go to Israel the next time, I want to be with you. I'm going with you. Well, I've had people tell me that sometimes and they forget it. And they didn't, they weren't able to persevere through and do it. So I had Vera, precious Vera, to write her. Tina couldn't get her. She tried and tried and couldn't get her. But your letter got her for me. Was able to get a hold of her. And she canceled her tour into Russia. She canceled it. That means she lost hundreds of dollars and had to pay out hundreds to go where we were. You get the picture? She lost hundreds of dollars because she wasn't on her job and had to pay hundreds out to get where we were going because she loved what the Lord had been doing. And so here we are in that meeting. And our people is talking about seeing the snow-capped Alps. The Alps in beautiful sunlight. Beautiful, beautiful. Well, this woman didn't sit very long. She said, Reverend Elm, I've got to tell you, I live in Switzerland. I have gone over Europe for years. And I have never seen the Alps in sunlight. It's always hazy, it's misty, it's cloudy. See, our people took it for granted because they've seen it over and over and over and over and over and over. And they thought it was commonplace. Yeah, our people just thought everybody sees it. And I expect some do, most do. Now I'll say, well, we saw it, it's great. But they didn't realize. No, no, they didn't realize. Here's a, here's a woman that travels over Europe for years, lives there. Never had seen it. And our people said, is that right? Well, that's great. It's something, isn't it? It was. See what I'm saying? I'm saying that God was so merciful to time us over and over again to see the Alps in sunlight. And here this beautiful woman, this gifted woman had never seen it. And yet our people didn't realize how significant it was because we were timed just like that plane. Just like that plane. Just like that plane. Time. It's for God's grace. It's through Jesus. It's the Holy Spirit. We want to give Him the glory and the praise and the honor. Thank you, Jesus. That morning there we were in the, the Scandinavian countries. We were in Copenhagen. And we got in the meeting. It was the night of the 20th of June. And we began the meeting. And after 10 minutes, here came Margaret Gaff, this beautiful guide in. There wasn't any room in the back, so she had to sit on the front seat over here. Now, it was a wonder she would come to be with us because many guides have not stayed with us. They might just be in and out, but they'd like to be in the back so they could get away if, if they felt they should. But she sat in the front seat. And I begin to tell about the kingdom of God and the leading of the Holy Spirit. And I tell about what happened at a bomb shelter in Jerusalem and north of Jerusalem, clear up to the border. And I was so exhausted that day that they had to hold me to get me to the room because I couldn't stand up. I had to hold on to you. I couldn't. I was too exhausted. I couldn't make it. And then when I got in bed, the Lord said, you, after supper, you're going to have a meeting in the bomb shelter. And I said, you'll have to help me get there. And I didn't have strength hardly to stand up. I was so exhausted. Now, when you're that exhausted, if you've ever been there, you know what I'm talking about. If you have it, you don't know anything about it. And have a responsibility of having a meeting when you can't hardly stand up. And your head and your hall and you're just exhausted. And you're 60-some years of age. You're not 40. 
That's young. 50, that's young. And you, you, it's hard to stand up. And we get in there and they get me to this bomb shelter and we start, I'm telling about when God comes on me and tells me about this dear ones in your church that has this ear trouble and the doctors that have a sight in there to look at. It was something. And also in the head. And I got to praying about that. And God did a miracle. I wish you all knew about it. It'd be, it's a great miracle what God did. Because doctors know when they look in there and see. And other parts of the head and the body. I was telling about that. So I started praying in that room in Copenhagen about a headache. And Margaret had had the migraine headaches for 30 years. And it just began that day. She always, through the years, could make the choice of her little groups. But she didn't have any choice this time. The president of the corporation said, I have a group coming, and they're a spatial group, and you're going to be their leader. She said, it's never happened to me before. She told me five days later on the bus. Maybe some of you heard her tell me. Did anybody? Thank you for hearing. I'm glad because you were down where you could hear her tell me. And uh, she had these migraine headaches for about 30 years. And she said, oh, could this be me? Because when you get that, she has to go to bed usually and stay one or two days. And here we're going to be there with her for days. And Jesus went into Margaret Gass' head and took that awful thing all in the head, the migraine, in the stomach, all of it out of her body. And she told us in uh, Jerusalem when she got there, she said, I never had another migraine headache. She said, I never had another one. See how God timed us in Copenhagen just exactly right. He allowed us to pray. He did a miracle for her. So therefore we see that it's always as God times it. We were delayed and delayed and delayed and delayed. And finally we got in the bus and started to the north. And just seconds I looked up and I saw the chimney sweeps. Well, I didn't know they were in existence. I just thought it was a fairy tale or told, you know, some story. And there they were actually. There they were. I said, look what we're seeing. How excited were we to see something like that? We got into a cathedral. Margaret said, in all my life, this is something. We were getting a concert. What were they playing, Daniel? Was it Bach? Bach. Yes, beautifully. Yes, she says, that's never happened here. I've never had a group when they were giving a concert. The fellow was up there practicing. But it's a good practice. And you and your sister were so deeply moved, and Oliver and the rest of us, my wife, uh, we were so, we didn't want to leave. It was great in that old church. She said, this this has never happened to me before. All timed. When we were in Oslo, just after that, she said, oh, look, 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 look. I can look right out and see the trees on these mountains here in the fjords. I have never in my life seen this in all the years I've ever been here. I've never seen it like this. She said, it's incredible. It's unbelievable. Amen. That's what she said. Did anybody here say that? Yes, sir. It's incredible. It's unbelievable. Yes. All time by the Holy Spirit. So he leads, oh blessed thought, oh words with heavenly comfort brought. He wants to lead us. He wants to guide us. And do exactly like when I called George and Sally needed us to pray. See, it was timed exactly. He knew exactly what was needed in Sarasota, Florida. So it's God's will to let Jesus have his will way with you and me. And we want to praise him. It's through Jesus Christ we'll ever know again. It's with the help of the Holy Ghost that we will know how to proceed to know exactly what Jesus would have us to do. And we want to give him all the glory because he wants to guide every step and every day all the way as he wills and as he purposes. It's all timed. Thank you, Jesus. Jesus, as we come to thee this afternoon, we come with deep appreciation and gratitude for the way you led us this morning. 
And you've had us talk about being led of the Holy Spirit and the kingdom of God. And the price that is to be paid uh, to be led by the Holy Spirit. Which is a wonderful story in itself. And so as we wait here with thanksgiving for the precious blood, for the leadership of the Holy Spirit, that you will take this pain out of the head and out of the body. That you will alleviate this exhaustion and let it be banished. Let it be taken and gone for your glory. And we'll praise thee for all the answers to prayer right now in this room. For thou art to be honored and glorified. In the name of Jesus Christ, for souls to be saved, for believers to be sanctified, persons to be reclaimed who have wandered into lukewarmness, into the plans of the human lights. I pray, O oh God, in the name of Jesus, for the work of the Holy Spirit in this place, in this wonderful time. So we wait before thee. Thou blessed Savior, thou risen Christ, soon to return to the earth. For the bride, who hath washed herself white in the sacred blood of the Lamb, that thee spilt thy blood just outside the walls of Jerusalem, a long ago, and still avails for us, and, stay, and saves now as it has always saved thy precious blood, the penitent heart, the soul that will repent, you will not turn away, but will save them. They suffered without the gates that you might sanctify the people with your own precious blood. Therefore, let us go into him without the camp bearing his reproach. So here we are this afternoon with thanksgiving and praise and adoration for the way that you lead, for the guidance of the Holy Ghost, for the joy of the Lord. It is so wonderful to our heart. Amen. And for the requirement. That is indeed for us to hear thy voice and power. Thank thee, Jesus. We give thee the praise in heaven. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. And to thee be honor, praise, and glory, and thanksgiving, the wondrous Savior, thee, the risen Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Now we're waiting before the Lord to know exactly what Jesus would have, whether he wants us to preach or wants us to pray, or whether it's his will uh, for special singing. Oh, yes. John, I didn't see you. I just wanted to praise the Lord for taking the headache away when you prayed. The Lord just took it out, and I wanted to praise him and thank him for that. Praise the Lord. Praise you, Jesus. Oh, God. Thank, Thank you, Jesus. Praise the Lord. Yes. I had this headache all morning, and it, it's just, had you prayed, and all, it just, just lifted out. I, I just praise the Lord. He's had this you. headache all morning and this afternoon. Yes. And when we prayed to Jesus, it was gone Thank like God. that. Praise the Lord. I'm thankful. I was at uh, I was at Gregory's, you know, in Louisville. And uh, in the midst of the meeting, Jesus told me of this terrible pain in the stomach. Yes. And I prayed, and it was this businessman out of Sarasota, Florida. He had some little businesses there. He was hurting so severely in his stomach that he was praying for the service to stop so he could get out of there. And when it was hurting so bad, Jesus told me about it. I prayed. He gave me the revelation. Then he let me pray, and it was gone. Was he, was he glad? He was glad. Thankful. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Oh, they were grateful. We were at Brother Roundtree's just a few days ago, and Jesus told me that there's a great pain and suffering in the stomach. We prayed that prayer, and Reverend Williams of Missouri or Kansas, wherever he is now, and say, look, Jesus took that thing right out of him. Amen. Brother Hawkins said he took it out of me too. Amen. A few minutes, the Lord told me of this pain in the hip. It was this way and that way. I wish I could put on a diagram how that was. And when we prayed... Jesus went right into Robert Morris sitting there and he took that right out of you. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Glory. Just think of it. How Jesus healed you. Yes, Robert, you want to praise the Lord just for a moment. Praise the Lord. I'm thankful Amen. that uh, Jesus never fails. Yes. His faithfulness is great. Amen. Thank you very much. 
So we're grateful that the Lord answers prayer Amen. and takes yes, care yes, for all. I was with Brother Richie in a meeting in Pocket City. And all at once, Jesus told me there was something like this, clear around the leg. It was just like a, a thread tied tight there. And of course, I didn't know anybody there, but a woman had had a growth cut out of the leg. And ever since that it had been in there, it was just like a, it was held. It was a black looking thing. And when Jesus helped me to pray, he just released that and took care of it. And then it didn't look so black anymore. Just took it out. Praise the Lord. Now, we're to give Jesus all the glory for each answer to prayer. How he helps and leads and guides and directs and blesses. We want to thank him and honor him for the way he he hears your prayer, he hears your cry. Hallelujah. Praise his name. Oh, there's someone's got a pain in their heads right through there. It's right back in here. Right there. And in the name of Jesus of Nazareth, behold, Jesus healeth thee for the glory of God. Jesus taketh now this suffering and pain from thee. Will it be of the organs or a deposit or a fall or another situation or a growth? Oh, it's a growth. Well, it's right here. And Jesus told me about it. And so I believe you're healed. Praise the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you, Jesus, for doing it, Lord. Thank you for taking it out of our brother Benny. Thank you, Jesus. It was right here. Isn't it wonderful that he could just tell me right here about his trouble? Hallelujah. Amen. Now there's one right in here through the forehead. It's back about, back so far in the head. It goes right to here. And in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, behold, you, you were made whole just like that. Yes. Just like that. Yes. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, thank you. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus in heaven. We're so in debt to him. Oh, oh Esther. Thank you, Jesus, for Praise healing this precious daughter also. Likewise, Jesus. Glory. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, we're so in debt to the Lord for the revelation of the Holy Spirit and for his answering prayer yes, sir. as he guides and reveals. Yes, sir. Oh, a touch of my heart on reveals. Oh, it's revelation. If you get one revelation in a lifetime, it's so wonderful. Yes, if you're privileged to have two revelations in a lifetime, it's so great. If you're privileged to have three revelations in a lifetime, it's rather extraordinary. Oh, that we'd give God all the glory, all the praise, and all the honor. Brother, Brother Morgan at Reverend Emory Reese's church, way back in about 62, 63, and uh, he'd been losing weight, losing weight, going down, going down, just lost and lost. Dorothy prepared the nicest food he couldn't eat. Didn't taste good. No, just didn't taste good to him. He couldn't eat because it just didn't taste right. He just couldn't put the food in his stomach. He was losing, losing. He was going down. He was going down. I don't know how many days, weeks, months. He had so many weeks to live. He had so many weeks to live. When I say days or weeks, he said weeks. Didn't say months, he said weeks. Roger, John, yeah, that's where the operation is. It's on weeks. Now, he never said a word, but he was sitting there. He told me the other night, and he said, I was praying, oh, Jesus. He never asked me. He doesn't, he's never requested me to do anything. He was just saying, Jesus, it'd be wonderful if, It'd be, I should be thankful if you tell your servant to pray for me because there's something wrong. I'm losing weight. Food doesn't taste good. He gives me the message. He gives me the message. You were on the couch. You were on the couch. I say yet. And so I begin to pray. And I ask God in Jesus' name to come into your body and take that growth out and kill it. Remove it. End it. Obliterate it. Let it be over. By his stripes are you healed. And he heals you immediately. Thank you. So I prayed Jesus to, I said, Lord, how many pounds may I ask for him to gain? He told me exactly the number of pounds. Yes. He told me the exact number yes. 
of pounds to ask for, and he gained that number, he never could get gain more or, or less. Just stayed right there. So we want to thank Jesus for that. You start gaining immediately. And Dorothy said your appetite came right away. And he started gaining immediately. One time we were eating together near Pittsburgh and the Lord revealed to me that tomatoes hurt him. He liked tomatoes and Dorothy would get a tomato even though it cost 25 cents. And those days are 50 cents. There's a lot of money way back then. But she'd get them anyhow because Robert enjoyed them immensely. But Jesus told me just like that, the tomatoes hurt him. So he quit the tomato business immediately. And in eight days, he saw a difference in his body. Praise the Lord. Praise I tell you, it was well, that remarkable. Praise the Lord, me. It was remarkable, the difference. And I'd have never known. I don't know if a doctor would have ever known. But I knew the difference just almost right away. Just, it's, it's been amazing. I've praised God for that revelation. Oh, oh that helps me. I'm a debt to praise Jesus for the Lord. privilege. Go ahead. Hallelujah. You got it in my heart, brother. Praise, praise the Lord. Lord. Thank, Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, we're praise so in debt God. to him for that. Thank oh, we're so grateful. Praise his name forever. Amen. I'm thankful. Well, Jesus leads and guides and saves yes. and sanctifies and heals and helps yes. us and blesses us so marvelously. And we want to praise him in heaven yes. for it. Oh, he just told me something. Right then. Right then. So there's a person here that has trouble. It's right here in this part of the abdomen. It's right here. Behold the name of Jesus of Nazareth for the glory of God, the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. Jesus, he to thee. Oh, he healed him, right? Heal him right then. It hits you. Oh, Rodney got the witness right here. He healed just like that. It's right in the stomach. Hallelujah. Oh, that's privilege, isn't it? Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. So you were to be up here with us, and God gave oh, you the witness. Just, oh, he's, oh, he says, let him talk here while it's been touching this precious servant. Hallelujah. Oh, it's been wonderful to be up here. The Spirit of God is so rich. So rich. I've been thinking, Reverend Helm, if uh, we've had the opportunity, if we could, if we would, to see the Alps by sunlight this afternoon. That's just us. You were telling the story and reviewing. Yes. Of the guide and how thrilled yes. that he had the opportunity yes. to see the right. Alps by sunlight. Yes, yes. And that's what I believe by God's grace. We may have had an opportunity to see some Alps by sunlight. I don't know how I'm doing climbing them, but I'm thankful for a view. Amen. By his grace. Hallelujah. And right. thrilled and, and thankful. Touches my heart. Uh, trusting uh, those things that are damaged with my ears might be healed. Yes, sir. That I might be able to hear. Yes. That I might be able to sense the music. Yes, the sense it is right. The Bachian like music. That's it. That's it. I, some would know more than I, but I understand some consider Bach to be one of the most perfect of composers in pure music. We've had that opportunity today. And then the chimney sweeps. Yes. And um, that's it. That's what he wants to sweep out all the set. Once you get it all cleared out, so we can so get some fire to go. Get the if chimney there's a lot of set, there's fire no, won't there, go if the chimney's no, plugged up. No, it's all plugged up. No. And we need to get the chimney sweep yes, and get it, our hearts all cleaned yes, out sir. so we can get a draft from glory. Yes, sir. Hallelujah. The fuel of his love. Yes, sir. So hallelujah. we can get to walking with God. Oh, hallelujah. I've been thrilled. Woo! You've been reviewing, and I'm just getting more and more thrilled and say, Jesus, oh, help me to see. Oh, help me to sense. That's it. That's the it. opportunity that's it. That's right. by His grace. And the Spirit has been so rich in my own heart, and I'm unworthy. Oh, I am unworthy. It touches me, and I am unworthy. Thank you. I am. Hallelujah. Thank you. Glory. Praise, Praise the Lord. Him. Amen. Robert, do you want to say a word for Jesus? Oh, I'm just delighted. I'm having me a wonderful time. <laughs> <laughs> I'm about to shout again. Oh, glory, glory, glory. Oh, I'd rather be here than anywhere in the world. Oh, my. Me too. <laughs> Me too. Oh my, what a time we've had here. Praise the Lord. <laughs> it's so great, isn't it? How Jesus can give us. Oh, it's such a wonderful time this morning. Then come this afternoon and feed us on the manna. 
drinking at a fountain, yes. telling us of the wonderful things, yes. of seeing the beauty of the sunlight upon the Alps, of his creative wonders that he gives us to see so we can walk a little closer yes. and on to beautiful things and the heights of his love, yes. the depths of his holiness, that yes. uh, we will be able to always fulfill his purpose on earth as yes. it is in heaven. Yes. Glory. Amen. Glory to Jesus. <laughs> Praise the Lord. We might take that down this way and let George witness here. Uh, he said, he said, Stephen was right a while ago before Stephen came in. He said, Stephen was right. Yeah, I think, it, I think it's on. Brother Helm, uh, I've heard Sister Helm play many times since I've been around you all. Yes, sir. But, uh, when I walked up here, I never, never sensed such a correlation between heart and fingers. Uh, yes, sir. When I got blessed, yes, sir. I could feel it. Yes, there sir. was a correlation between her heart and her fingers. Yes, that's, right. that's a gift of the Holy Ghost. And uh, it really got into my heart. Amen. I just wanted to tell, though, you know, when uh, we... And the group that from uh, Sarasota that got to be with you and yes. Oliver and all the dear people, both in uh, Scott Depot and then Maranatha, I had to press to get there because I was sick. And you, you, you made the mention of it in, in your newsletter, of course. But uh, I had had a number of physical problems. Number one, it's like a hand was going over my eye, this left eye, as though the sight was being closed off. Saw a lot of lights out here, a lot of jagged lights and all of that. So I went, after the second uh, occasion, I went to the optometrist. And from there, he sent me to an ophthalmologist. And uh, the ophthalmologist first thought I had uh, maybe a hole in the retina or the beginning of a detached retina. But he found nothing, and so he said, well, the next move for you is to go to your physician, go to a medical doctor. And unbeknownst to my wife, as I told some of you, you know, that night uh, there in Scott Depot on the platform, I didn't tell her, but I went to my family physician, and he said to me, he said, uh, George, you need to be in the hospital. He said, you need to be under a neurologist. He said, I strongly suspicion that you have either an aneurysm or a growth. Yes, sir. And I looked at him and I said, I'm going up in the mountains. We're... The people of God are going to be meeting. I got a divine rendezvous up there. I witnessed to him, Brother Helm. I said, you know, I didn't, I didn't uh, cast my pearls before swine and say God could do this or God could do that, but I came in faith. Yes, yeah, sir. Wonderful. Thank you, Jesus. I'll never forget that night on the platform, prayer number one. Prayer number one, because you see, attending all of this, uh, the problem with the yeah, yeah. eye, yeah. Uh, I had had a severe dizziness. Yeah, sir. I had had a headache for six weeks. Yeah, I had a pressure at the base of my yeah, brain. Could, that's where tell. you loke it zeroed yes, in on. Exactly, and that's what I could tell. Now, in a Saturday that. night prayer meeting, the men prayed for me at home, and I got delivered from the six weeks of headaches. But this pressure was there. There was something in here, Brother Helm. Yes, yes. And when, when God, uh, the revelation came to you and, the, and uh, what you said that night, yes. it's, it's just as though an yes. angel took it out. Yes, God took it out. I know yes. he did. Yeah, he took so it I, out of there. I, I'm thankful for whatever it was for divine healing. And it pays to persevere. It pays yes, to pass. sir. So uh, I just want to praise his name because uh, I feel greater uh, today physically than I felt for a long time. Praise you, Jesus. And I thank him Amen. for what he did for me. Yes. And I went in the pulpit that night not knowing what to do. That's right. I didn't know whether to sing or pray or preach mm -hmm. 
or witness or there's revelation or scripture. I didn't know, so I started praying. And if people knew how desperate I was yes. to try to discern what God wanted me to do. So I started praying, and then he took me to your trouble in the yes. back of the brain. Praise the Lord. And when you started talking, I could tell in my brain where the mm -hmm. situation was. Yes. Tonight, this afternoon. Yes. And so Jesus helped me to pray. And then he had me to pray for another servant of Jesus like you. Yes, he did. And I didn't know that he had sit down on the bed and it collapsed, went down on him and it hurt his back. And, and uh, they had to put ice packs on there and pillows for six days. It happened before that. And he was sitting about seven feet from me and you were sitting about six feet this way or seven. Yes. And the Lord healed you in prayer number one and healed James Wright right over there that night. He's down here somewhere. There he is. And Jesus went into this brother's back. And you had had that for six days. Yes, sir. And and uh, I didn't know it. No, you, I didn't tell you at all. No, no, I didn't know it. But Jesus knew it, so he told me about you. And he went into your back and put those bones and muscles, cartilages, tissues, fibers, all back. Amen. And took care of you. Hallelujah. Prayer number one. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Right at the beginning of the service. Yes, sir. Amen. Brother. See the burdens he's lifted here today? Amen. You want to say anything, James? I'm thankful, Brother Helm, how the Lord's been helping us. That's in my heart. The Lord's been merciful to the Maranatha Fellowship. And he really has. And, uh, to our ministry. And yes, a great joy to have you with us oh, for those three days. Oh, it was a precious privilege. Uh, it really helped our, our congregation. Yes. And I believe we have about 65 with us first time. I remember the first oh. four, five, six weddings I came was myself, my wife, yeah, that's all. our three children. That's all you had. Yes. And this time, the Lord helping, we had 65. Isn't that wonderful? All of them stand up for a moment. Just stand up. All these people stand up. Looky here. Glory to God. Over here and over here and over there. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, dear ones. Just think, we we have them because Jesus led us in a telephone booth to know to go to West Virginia church number six. And uh, about the end of the first year, and it was one year, James called Oliver and he said, who is this Lauren Helm? Anyhow, as much bad as I hear about him, sure there has to be a little bit of good. I wonder who he is. And Oliver Hope says, James Wright, who are you? Who, who are you that you know? So rare. Yeah. So we got with him and got to love him and went over the Lord, bless you, go like that. Right. Right we on. had a time. Jesus helped us. Wasn't that precious? Yes, yes sir. sir. Lord, Lord helped us. He helped us in a marvelous way together in a fellowship. He and his wife are like our children, too. And we have wonderful times in their home as well as in the church. I remember in the study, Roger, when we'd be in there with James the first time, Canova, way down, yes, little village. And he'd say, oh, he'd get so blessed in there, and we agreed. If we could get out of that study in the sanctuary, what was in there, it'd be a wonderful place. And God helped us miraculously. And then, of course, they told him at the church, after he'd built it up from 40, 50, 60 people up to 200, they told him, if you're going to fellowship this servant, well, you just uh, just can't be. And uh, he said, well, I resign now. I can't be told to not fellowship with any of God's children. So I resign as right now. They said, let's talk about it. He, they said, no, no discussion at all. My three children never heard a word about this servant, and I don't intend for them to. I'll meet my wife at the front door with my children now. So he, that instant, he left all of his credentials. He left all of his status. He left all that he had. Went to the front door of that church. Virginia and the three children were there. And a few people went out with him. And they had a prayer meeting. And a home. Meet, met in a home. And then they had a warehouse. And we got invited to the warehouse. <laughs> and I took my staff. And Oliver's and his staff. And we went to the warehouse. Uh, South Charleston, I believe it was. Dunbar. Dunbar. And we got there, 
And we all were prayed, you know, and we were happy in the study place. Went in, all sat down. All the men sat down. But Jesus told me to go over and love the drummer. You know, we're reviewing morning, noon, and night. <laughs> and just before we get into the bed, we'll review it again. He said all that he had done for him. So I went over to love the drummer. And when I got my arms around him, he's about the size of our James. And I got him in my arms and I prayed for his encouragement. Of course, I didn't know him. I'd never seen him before. I prayed for him to be healed and to be helped. I didn't get any witness in my heart until I said protected. Jesus told me he needs protection. Of course, I didn't know he was a policeman. I didn't know he was in gun battles. And I didn't know they spit in his face and was suing him and working. Uh, made it hard on him. I didn't know that. And... Uh, uh, I said, oh, Lord, Lord I, I pray now for this precious son to be protected, kept from danger and harm. When I sat down, Brother Wright said, do you know who he is? And I said, no. He said, he's one of our local policemen here in South Charleston. And he's discouraged. He's ready to resign and quit because they sue him, they spit in his face, they make it hard on him. And of course, he was very sensitive. I didn't know how sensitive, how, I didn't know at that time uh, only when I got my arms around him, he was such a wonderful man, even though he was strange to me. So I told him, I said to the pastor and to him, I said, you're on a mission field and your pulpit reaches higher than I can see and farther than I know. He didn't resign. He stayed. And he began to write Christian tracts for policemen. And now they're in various parts of the world. They're in nearly all the big cities. Through that leading... We, today, if we were to go to New York City, we can call Jerry Francis, and he's in contact with two to four hundred Christian policemen in the city of New York. Wally Francis is here from New York. What? Wally. Is Wally here? here yes. Where's he at? He's here, praise the Lord. Someplace around. There he is. Oh, we're so glad. Tell mother and dad hello for us back in New York City. All because Jesus led us to love a drummer that we have you and Jerry and the family and all those precious ones. And one of your dear friends took care of Reverend Pumphrey when his wife, you know, had the stroke out of Washington, D.C. into New York. And one of your dear ones would take them to the hospital and look after them. He and his daughter. It's a great story how God helped you precious ones to look after our brother here that we found 40 some years ago in 1939 because God told me what to do in 1937. So it's wonderful to have you with us. Do you have any testimony you want to give? Yes, he's just thankful to be here, Todd. So thank you very much. Thank you. So Jesus worked through the drummer. And now he has been in Germany. And God had a marvelous time there. Uh, I think, was there a soul one in Germany? Yes, out on the streets. Yeah, out on the streets, a soul was one there. There's one in the, in the gutters. Yes, sir. Jack knelt down and prayed with him there. Yeah. His he pulpit got... reached into Germany and the altar call was beautiful and the soul was one and brought in. Became a lamb of the living God through the blood of Jesus Christ. Because the drummer was loved in a warehouse. Because we had the right leading in a telephone booth. Because we found someone that heard the rustling in the mulberry trees. And said, I better come down and investigate this to see what's going on down here in the lowlands of Macedonia. <laughs> and now he's tracks. They wanted him in Bombay. They want him in Japan. And there's different places that want him now. He lectures to university students, to high school students, to civic students. And his ministry is probably one of the greatest ministries in the state of West Virginia or in the United States. Or in the world. Oh, because Jesus led me to love a drummer. His ministry's gone out. I got into a meeting at a barn a while back, and Thomas and Shirley was with us. They're over here somewhere, right there. And uh, Edward and Jackie was with us. They were together about a week. It was one of the greatest weeks of their life. That's what they said, to Jesus' glory. And we got in a meeting in this barn, where we're talking about this morning, at John and Janice's barn. Lord helped us this morning to tell you about the wonderful time we had in that barn communing with the saints. Well, we had a great meeting like that the day they were there. The power was so great in that barn. Thomas, you told me we won't be able to know how to tell the people this. That's true. 
Hey man, get the get the microphone over to him. Oh, I, you, oh, you're happy. Look at that light. Look at the joy. Look at the joy on this precious brother. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Uh, this meeting in the barn. Now, there's been several meetings up and down the country uh, in uh, in barns and. In fact, there's a brother right here. We've had meetings in a cow shed. Stand up there, Claude. We've had great meetings in a cow shed, just you and me. In the wheat field. Oh, it was marvelous out there. Amen. Do you remember what one time I came through the door and Jesus told me what was happening in Korea? And that man where we prayed held on to the thing and shook like that and God delivered him from death. Uh, we praise the Lord for the times of prayer and revelation back in 1946, 47, 48, 49, 50, 51, 52, 53, on for years. Amen. Uh, I think it's not turned on. Uh, there's a little switch at the bottom, I believe, somewhere. Amen. Praise the Lord. I say the Lord has given us great times together. We praise him. Oh, Hallelujah. Yeah. We praise him. Hallelujah. Thank you very much. Yes, Thomas. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. And that barn meeting. <laughs> That barn meeting, it's been, it, it's been some time before that barn, but I'm having time. <laughs> Lord, Lord is really blessed. It's back, it, back in uh, Sunday school class, I don't know if the pastor knows this, uh, Pastor Wright, but uh, Thomas Young was teaching, and, and, uh, and he said something along, uh, uh, you know, how we have to really dig in to go for the Lord and how Satan will fight. And, and I just mentioned... Uh, how that um, uh, that the Lord has vacations down the road for us, you know, and I really didn't mean a, a physical, I meant maybe spiritual, I didn't know anything, you know, and it wasn't, but a few days after that, that uh, Brother Edward and Jackie called for us to come down a couple of days just for the weekend, you know, and uh, well, that sounded nice because the girls were going off on youth trip and all, so that would be, that'd be real nice, you know, so never thought nothing about the Sunday school class that was a couple of weeks before that, and so... We, uh, we got to go there and had a wonderful time, met some of the greatest people in the world, and got to the barn there and <laughs> had a, a wonderful time. Like I said, it's better, better than uh, we can tell, I'm sure, because the Holy Spirit was there. And then we got to go into uh, to the uh, Kentucky Revival, and so uh, it, was, it was that week that uh, uh, I was, me and Brother Tom was talking about about two weeks before how the Lord uh, just led in a vacation. And it was a sight. And here, now we're here, and I'll tell you, I am having a time. I am having a time. When that testimony started across that platform, it went from uh, years and down years and up years, and it just how the Holy Spirit is. Brother, I, I was ready to testify to them for sure. And I, was ready, I, mean, I, I am having a time, and I'm thankful that we can be here. Oh, brother, it's a sight. It's something. It's something. Praise the Lord. I can't explain what God's doing for our family. Oh, it's so wonderful. It's beyond words. I just wish that I that's can convey what's in my heart. That's in my heart, Shirley. You're so precious. I tried to go back and, and really think when, the, when it started, the help that we started getting. And I thought it was the last revival when you were at Maranatha. And it went back farther than that. It just kept going. And I know now that it was the revelation of 2019 Canal Terrace. That's it, that's it, that's it. That's when we started really getting help. And I praise God for it. Yes, yes. Yes, when, yes, Thomas, you have something else I'm to say? I'm certainly glad that Pastor Wright stood up for what was right. Not for what man was trying to tell him to do or going by a committee, but he did what he felt the Holy Spirit was leading. And that was to... Uh, uh, have fellowship with you because it has certainly made it it is just unreal and, I, and two when I hear people way on the far corner uh, testify because our testimonies are so much alike yes sir. how that uh, uh, I heard brother Noel there I mean he's a year or two older than me yeah I heard him say uh, in Kentucky that uh, he'd learned more spiritually and uh, he had heard more from the Lord in the last I think two years than all his ministry I thought that Thank was really something. That is, because oh, I, we're indebted uh, to Jesus for that, something. Thomas. It's really something. Oh, it's, oh, it's so precious. Amen. So precious. How to yourself. Oh, we're it's so something. grateful. I just pray that uh, my little girls here are picking up. I pray. 
I was going to have prayer, a special prayer with them that they wouldn't be too tired and one thing or another. And Quicken. I thought, well, we're here. Quicken. And by God's grace and, and leading the Holy Spirit, and if we'll tell the flesh to get behind, how that they can pick up what they're supposed to do. Strengthen them, inform them, lead them as they know how to die to Amen. self, to Amen. follow the voice of Jesus, Amen. and do God's will on earth as it is in heaven. Yeah. That's a great treasure. Yes. Amen. I was privileged to preach the other night at Brother Roundtree's on the kingdom of heaven is like a treasure hid in a field. Oh, I had a tremendous time trying. I didn't have any notes on it because I never heard it in 68 years in a church. But the Lord helped me to preach that night. Yes, amen. Yes, about that. And then he gave me a, another sermon the next morning at 4.30 to 5.30 o'clock. I jotted that down on an envelope in a letter that Jack Saladay sent me in Charlotte. And it's got a little bit of treasures on it. Tell them about that treasure. Okay. And in that barn that day, I was crying out and preaching. And I said, oh, I want you to pray with me that I'll be able to find someone that will help me finance Brother Jack. Because he has a lot of things to look after and no secretary. And he has to do a lot of writing. And, and he needs help in getting someone to do writing and postage and all the various things that's needed. And, of course, Maranatha has helped him all right some. But he needed more help. And when we got to our front foyer, you said, oh, I want to tell you something. I said, surely it could be today God would reveal something to me of the person that, I should, that we should help financially. And he found out who it was. Praise God. Jack the policeman. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory. Praise oh, what God. a meeting we had in the barn. Amen. God bless us real good. You remember the... Uh, the, the, the hay fever or whatever it is that I have and how I was in there for uh, I, all I got to do is be around a horse about 15 minutes and I start sneezing and yes on. yeah you're allergic to horses oh we were in there about two hours you were in there three. about an hour to two hours and you never sneezed once coming out of that barn it dawned on me that I hadn't sneezed one time and that horse stood there and looked at us over the yeah he just at looked at us you know? oh yeah he's a, oh yeah he knew that he'd been in a lot she'd been in a lot of meetings yeah <laughs> She looks around at me, I'll tell you, it's a sight. How she turns her head clear around. I can't get my head around as far as she can and looks at me while we're in the meeting. Oh, and I take the dear ones over the, over the village and show them the maple tree where Jesus gave me the revelation 50 years ago of our home. I show them the spot where I was converted and saw the light. Jesus came into my heart 52 years next January. I take them to the place where God helped me to be instantly timed to save the life of, four, of Terrence Wendell. I take them to the home and show them the window of the room where God has me timed to the seconds before Edwin Howard swallowed the strychnine tablets of my mother's. Just got me there just in time to get him when he was two and a half to three years of age. How God has had us timed over the world. We want to praise him, adore him, glorify him, and honor him for all that he's done for us. And all that he will do, praise his wonderful name forever. Amen. Unto Jesus be the glory and the praise for how he has helped us and led us and directed us. I want to praise him. We got to see the Alps too. Yes. Yeah. Oh, you got yeah. to see them, didn't we you? We got a picture of them. Yes, you got, got to see them. <laughs> and you see, that was the last time we went over. Yes, I know. See, just the last time in March, you got to see the mountains. True. Think of it, snow-covered mountains. <laughs> and the time before. <laughs> Just think of it. How oh, God has blessed us like this. I thank Him. I praise Him. I adore Him. I glorify Him. Amen. For all that He does for us. It's wonderful not to get discouraged when you're in a situation. Oh, it's so precious. It surely is. Amen. Thank you very much. I called Thomas the other day and we talked about. Shirley and he and the girls going with us to Israel by the way of Rome. And he says, if you believe we're to go, well, we'll just sign up and get started. Glory. <laughs> oh, and he's, he's tickled. And just look, he's so happy. Oh, he's so happy. Stand up so they can see you, Thomas, because you're, it's a sight to see your face, how happy you are. See, he's so happy. Oh, amen. This is a sight. This is some vacation. Uh, you remember the first trip, I didn't want to go. No, you didn't want to go. No, you didn't no, think I... you need to go to heaven by the way of Israel. 
That's what I said. <laughs> But I'll tell you, we had a time, didn't we? Oh, you know, wasn't, we it a wonder, a time wasn't it a wonderful it, time? It was, it was better than we even know. I don't believe we'll even ever know it all until, until we get know, to Jesus' true, amen. side, the Holy Spirit. And now you, uh, you feel that uh, the whole family, and I thought, well, you know, the whole family, that's four of us, I know. And that's, uh, that's going to be something. Yes, sir. And, I, and, you know, the flesh almost bucked, but now that uh, it, uh, uh, I can't wait. I can't wait <laughs> to get them over there. Life. I can't. I told the girls that they've been in Christian schools since started, and one of them's going to tenth grade. I said, "This is going to mean more to you almost than did us, because uh, you you know a lot of Bible. You yes, know, sir. they're really going to get a lot of help. Praise the uh, Lord! By going, I feel. Yes, of course, sir. Lord's blessed me two good girls. Oh, they're fine so girls. So precious are these daughters. Definitely a good family. Yes, sir. I give him all the praise. Oh, it's great. And, and I'm in a good church with uh, Pastor Wright and his family oh, to, uh, to have a place to feel free to worship and be thankful Amen. for the things that the Lord's done for us and give yes, us. Yes, sir. I'm thankful. Glory. I'll tell you, Thomas, it's something to rejoice about. <laughs> I'll tell you, Brother Wright, it's something to find a man all for God like this. Yes, sir. Because God used him. Uh, his brother talked him into buying a 2910 Kanawha Terrace. Amen. He didn't want to buy it. No. Just like he didn't want to go to Israel. <laughs> it's a marvel how somebody can talk someone into something it's just the very thing we need Amen. It turns out good yes. and then God gave me the witness when I was talking to Reverend Wright you're supposed to review morning, noon and night <laughs> we should a few people have and when Reverend Wright called me and we talked together. We had such a great time together in Virginia. The three of us on the telephone. And he had four or five lots to, to purchase any one of them for the church. Was it four or five? Five. So we talked a while and I said to him, I said, I really don't know, of course, what you're to do. I haven't any idea. Unless the Holy Spirit were to reveal it to me be by his grace, by God's mercy and gifts that he did ever allow me to know this. And I said, oh, what is the first one, the second? And when we got to the 2910 Canaba Terrace, the Holy Spirit witnessed right here. And it was the least likely of all. That's the one you really hardly wanted because it had a big ravine in it. And you'd have to haul hundreds of loads to try to fill in to have a parking lot and have a building. And it, the other lots, I guess you wouldn't have to haul in so many things. Some of them were on mountaintops. Some of them were in West, in West Virginia, too. They're mountaintop or a valley. Yeah, one or the other. <laughs> and uh, so I said, oh, brother, I said it's 2910 Canaba Terrace. He said, is that right? I said, yeah, that's it. He said, well, that'll be it. Well, this trust. No, but I said, now, wait just a minute. You can't have it now. He said, what? I said, no, you can't buy it now. <laughs> That's something, isn't it? Been waiting all this time, been for sale one to two years. Uh, but Jesus told me to tell him, we can't buy it now. You have to wait five to six weeks. Well, he was so happy to know that he could get it. He said, I'd like to go down and look it over. I said, Even though he couldn't get it for five or six weeks. Because the Holy Spirit revealed to me he couldn't have it. They couldn't have it. Just like he revealed to me that Brother Ryan was not 15 years ago at the revelation of St. Louis that you were to go to Oilton, Oklahoma. He told me you could not leave in August. You had to wait till the 28th of September. Right. Start your girls in Iceland, Kentucky at school and then have to take them out and drive all that distance. That's right. Eight or nine hundred miles out there. Yes. But you were willing, you and your precious wife said, we'll do what Jesus has revealed. Uh, but he went down and looked at the lot that had been for sale for a year or two and it had a sign on it that says, Sold! <laughs> His heart dropped to the bottom. But I want you to look at this soul sign. I want you to see S-O-L-D didn't just say sold. It says, I am your bank. I am your finance. I'm going to help you get this lot and I'm going to fill it in with hundreds of loads. That's what that soul sign said. <laughs> This precious brother, precious Thomas and Shirley, you see, how, there's hardly any bank that will give you $40,000 without some collateral. They didn't have any collateral. 
They didn't have anything. Just people. Just people, that's all. Say, that's priceless. <laughs> Boy, you had a lot. In fact, they had jewels better than in cases. And uh, so this precious brother and his wife, they were able, by God's grace, to help the, this spot and to fill in the ravine to a measure where you could park a number of cars. Praise God. Praise God. See, it's so great. I saw more of it, more in it, just the last few weeks, how great that soul sign was. See, you may read a sign that you think it's over, but it may read a lot in it that we can't quite find the letters yet. Just wait for five or six weeks. Wait on God a little longer. And this precious couple were able to help this church get this lot. I think it's a wonderful story. And they didn't intend to, to, of course, they were hungry for fellowship. And they were going to church to church and their hearts were crying because they were burdened. As they'd go uh, to the church and their heart would be crying for God to have his way. But they came to the dedication, not anticipating to come back. But when they got home, Thomas said, Shirley... Something in my heart while we were there. Something happened Amen. to me. Amen. See that soul sign? See that soul sign? <laughs> Something's in my heart, surely. We're going to go back Lord. next Sunday. They never have left there since. <laughs> See what was in that soul Praise sign? God. Oh, it's so great. God. It's not over yet. Praise it may be in the beginning, Thomas. Amen. Surely. Glory. Oh, how a wonderful, wonderful story. Oh, someone's sick right there in the stomach. And in the name of Jesus of Nazareth, behold. Be healed in the name of Jesus the Christ. Let this sickness be gone from you and let you be whole and healed through Jesus the Lord God. Jesus of Nazareth healed thee. And so here the Lord did a wonder. And they had this little church a couple, three years ago. You know, we were talking, of course, the first few uh, few, uh, months they were in this church, cement block building. Uh, When you had your first prayer meeting, did you have 50 there? First prayer meeting there? Yeah, the the building you're in now. The first Sunday, did you have 100 in prayer meeting? First, First Sunday we moved into our new building, we jumped up 100 new people. Yeah. How, uh, how... How, how did you do in prayer meeting? Did you have 100. about 100 in prayer meeting? Yes, sir. And then in a few months, you had 200. 200. And then a year or two, you had 300 in prayer meeting. 300. And then in a little while, you had 400 in prayer meeting. In a little while, we had 400. Yeah. And then a little more, you had 500 in prayer meeting. 500. Of all told, and the others, yes, sir. Now, I tell you, friends, you know, my home church that I used to be in, they didn't have a, uh, most of the people the prayer meeting was our fellowship, the people that came to help me and my wife. Most of the prayer meeting group was our people. Is that right? Uh, Yes, sir. Yeah. And uh, just a few people in the whole area, a radius of miles, and the strongest church in the community, and only a few people in prayer meeting. And a church had been going 100 years. God Got this church started, 2910 Kanawha Terrace, and they had 500 within five or six years at prayer meeting. Yes, God. We're, we're so thankful. The, we're day, thankful the day after our last revival with you, the revival ended on Wednesday night. Yes, we sir. had 700 and... 71 the night, that last night on Wednesday. 771. Night. The very next day, the man who owns this large trailer park across the... The street. We just, we just were able to purchase a bar and close down a bar, and we're hoping to get in all of it by September. Well, all around this building we bought across the street is about, oh, 12 to 18 acres trailer park. He called us the very day after the revival ended and asked us if we wanted to buy it. Why, why, why James? And I was shocked. I mean, you know, we didn't even call him or anything. He called us the day after the revival ended with you. He called us and asked us if we wanted to purchase this property, of course, we told him we were just trusting to remodel this bar that the Lord had closed down, and we're thankful to have that closed down. But God's been good to us. Oh, he's been marvelous. He's been very, very good to us. And we have precious people. And uh, as far as I know, within 
probably 10 to 12 minutes of each other. Most people don't realize it's Scott Depot yes. and the Marinette Fellowship are within 15 minutes of each other. That's it. And uh, we, we together run uh, about 900 people. So On, and we're meeting. thankful. Yes, in church service. What God's Isn't doing. Isn't wonderful? Amen. Praise the Lord. See, on Sunday morning, you run around 600? We've been running this summer around 550. 550. Yes. I remember when you did have 600 on Sunday, but that was in... We're uh, trusting uh, September, we'll go back to 600 plus. If you had a larger building, you had a room like this. See, the night we were there, there was 914 <laughs> the first night. And then the next night, there was 933, but you couldn't get them in the building. You had to put them in other buildings. We had them in three different buildings. Had three different buildings to get them in. And the people came, had turned away, so they were discouraged. But if you had a room like this, you'd, you could hold a thousand. We would probably have over a thousand. Yeah, that's right. By God's grace. By God's grace. And so uh, the last night, we were in the meeting. The place was jammed. And the Lord came upon me and told me he was going to heal someone. Told me where it was. Told me in the body. And so I prayed. And when I finished the prayer, I said, Jesus, we're in this building here where there was about four or five hundred or the other building. He witnessed them all right. They're on the other building. And you told me the next day what happened. Oh, and they... some others told me that the, uh, that the mother could not dress herself. She was so ill. True. And so her family dressed her, being so ill, so they dressed her and took her and she was in the, other, in the other room. And when we prayed, what happened? God healed her. What happened in there? Oh, they started shouting and Praising God. They had you a told me meeting. they almost went wild in yes. there. Yes. <laughs> Made a believer out of most everybody. You'd have to be at the the fellowship one time to know what going wild would be. Yeah. <laughs> 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 or say it again, that did us a lot of good. <laughs> But while for God in praise and thanksgiving for Jesus, yes, wonderful sir. mercy. And they were delighted. You see, the football fans, they go wild over a touchdown. But they went, they exclaim loudly because Jesus healed. Because God sent the Holy Spirit in there to heal this mother that couldn't dress herself. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I just looked at my watch and it's almost 3.30. How could we be here for two and a half hours? How, how did we get here? That we're just sailing right through here by God's grace. Praise the Lord! Think of it. How God has been so merciful to us. Oh, but you see, if you'd been with us in St. Louis, you'd enjoyed it this much or more. If you'd been with us in Louisville, you'd enjoyed it this much or more. Oh yes. Oh, I tell you, how God's blessed the last few days. There's my brother Edward. Stand up. You're so happy. Get him in a microphone. That's my baby brother. Now I want you to know that I prayed with him when he was 18 years of age. Then I was privileged to be with him when he's trying to find Jesus, October the 16th, 1950. And the saints of God had prayed and prayed for him. They had prayed and prayed for him. Because I had made a certain statement, started for the altar, and then I could see three blue suits. My brother's coming this way. And they prayed with you an hour. That's right. It's they went home and got mother hard. out of bed, and she prayed <laughs> with you. And they got Betty out of bed, and she prayed with you. And uh, finally, Betty came over and said, he wants you to pray with him. And I, I said, I'm not going to go over and pray with him unless I'm supposed to. Most people uh, pray, they, they mean well. Uh, but unless you're led of the Holy Spirit, you want to be sure. Because if you don't know how to lead someone, uh, just pray for wisdom. Because it need, we need Jesus' guidance to know how to pray for people to be saved or to be sanctified, or to be reclaimed. And so I wasn't going to go over to him unless he called for me, uh, unless Jesus sent me. So he called, and I went over with him. Now, well, this is my brother. Bone of my bone, flesh, we're the same flesh and same bones. Come out of the same loins, same womb carried us. We love each other, all of us, very much. Right. And I went over and put my arm around my baby brother that I cared for. I diapered him. I rocked him. I looked after him and his twin brother. And I went over and I said, my precious brother. He said, oh, yes. I said, before I can help you, I'll need to know and get your spiritual location when you left the pew. See, before you can pray with anybody for their need, you must know where they are located in order to get them where they're to be. See, it, we need to know how to locate the situation of the people we're with. And you only learn that as you die and obey. 
and wait and follow. And see, Jesus knows exactly what the situation is that the person is in, whether to be burdened for the church or to be saved or to be sanctified or another burden. So I said, now before I can pray with you, I'll have to locate you. I said, when you left the pew over here, did you have a burden in your heart? He said, oh, yes. He said, just as soon as you left the pulpit and said you were going to the altar to pray, and if your brothers followed you all well and good, if they didn't, his blood, their blood would not be required at my hand. He said, a great burden flew into my heart like a big tub. And it was so big that he couldn't stay in the seat. It was so strong. He got right out and he started. I said, wonderful. I know then that you lived in the city of conviction. Get the location. I said, that's wonderful. Then I know when you left the seat, you were living in the city of conviction. See, that's a great city. We need a lot of people living in that now. We need them for the millions in the United States. If we can get, if we can get great millions of people living in the city of conviction, it'll change the whole world, depopulate the prisons in the divorce courts, in the drug business, and all the other kinds of evils and drunkenness and so on. So I said, now we know where you were. Now, the next question is, when did the burden lift from your heart? He said, why? On the way to the altar, right over there. I said, brother, you were in the kingdom of God before you ever got to this place. <laughs> they were trying to get him in for an hour or more. See, he was already in. You see, we need wisdom to know how to help each other. Now, this, this little lesson here is for every pastor, every missionary worker, every Christian worker. You see, we need to have the guidance of the Holy Spirit. He was already in the kingdom before he got here. See, we need to be taught, but it comes by waiting upon God and being inwardly crucified of the carnal nature and letting him teach us. Now, as I say inwardly crucified the tender nature, the carnal nature, he says, I lead God and direct and tell you what to do right here now in this spot. See, he wants to cleanse out of us this awful nature of evil so he can teach us what to do. And so then I learned after he'd gotten saved and had all these wonderful experiences and I learned a few years ago that he's counting the days or the months and the days, the weeks and so on and years until he was retired. And that was seven years ago, last July. And he could tell people in Germany when I'd be there or in Israel how long it would be. And now he's in his fourth year since retirement began. He thought the first year you were in a dream. That's the right. The second year you thought you were in a dream. Still in a dream. And now he's still in a dream. The Lord's been wonderful to us. Oh, praise the Lord. We've had a high privilege. Oh, yes. um, I know many people would like to be in our shoes because we're privileged to get to be with you. The meetings at Louisville and St. Louis were so great. Uh, the, in Louisville, when Jeannie sang, was such a high, high, I don't know how to tell you where we were. When she sang in Hebrew, uh, and she, while she was singing... We didn't understand the words, but somehow it was in our heart. It's like our heart knew what she was saying. It was so great. And, uh, of course, uh, just coming back from St. Louis, uh, it seemed like the meetings just get better. That can only be in the kingdom. Only but God's grace could it ever you be. You can't say well it was better than another time. or another, but somehow they just do get better. And we're so thankful. We're just so grateful for the young people at St. Louis. That, that night was great. Oh, yes. oh, See, uh, how oh, many oh, churches was, love for the really young great. people to do what those young people did? Yes. It's, oh, yeah. it's a high privilege. Yes. Oh, we're so thankful. I'm so thankful for the joy that he puts into our hearts. I, I, I believe most of us can say we truly have been eating at the banquet eating table. Because we've been fed. The joy somehow uh, gets a little bit bigger when you're fed. And... Uh, when Nancy was testifying a while ago, well, see, she's just like an angel to me. Yeah. Why? Well, it just seemed like she was uh, an angel up there. I'm so thankful uh, when people are uh, doing what Jesus wants. It's way beyond in our, our description that we can tell people about. Uh, we can tell people how wonderful it is here today, but we can't. Well, I'm so thankful for what he does put in our heart. Even though we are feeble and cannot get it out too well, so grateful. I praise His holy name. Yes, yes. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus, that God hears and answers prayer and takes care and helps us to know what to do and that He would, he would reveal that Oliver and Barbara were to go to another church and now there's 350 to 400 people in that church 
and God is working. There's such love there. And over at Maranatha, look, there's a five or six hundred people were there, and God is working there. And at Fayetteville, look at the wonder of Fayetteville, Robert Morey, all because of that guidance. All because of that guidance. And Charles Payne was so happy in St. Louis. Oh, he was happy. You were happy. We all were blessed by the presence of God through Jesus Christ, the leadership of the Holy Spirit. Unto the Lord be thanks and praise. Amen. Now, a while ago, the Lord revealed a spatial number, and so we've been a long journey since then. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Is this a choir? Is this or a duet or a trio? Or a solo. It's a duet. Hmm. Isn't that something? It's a duet. Uh, Daniel and Jenny. Two, three, four, yes, four, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Um, it's the eleventh one. I wish it were the sixth. Well, Jesus, you know how to anoint these thy children. Let us stand. We've been sitting for a long time, haven't we? Oh, I forgot. A two and a half hours, a little over. It's been sitting down. Praise the Lord. Amen. Yes. Praise the Lord. Yes, John. Amen. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. You want to get your music? Is everything ready? You're all ready to go? All right. Praise the Lord. You may be seated. No, wait, wait just a moment. Have to stand a little longer. You're not quite ready. Sit down. I haven't stressed enough. Long. <laughs> Amen. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, is that right? Uh, we have the daughter of uh, Brother and Sister Horace Reynolds from Moreland that gave us the trees and their woods. And uh, of course, I knew their family, the children, when they were young. I'm so glad that she is here with her son and her friend. And we are grateful uh, to have them here. Where are they located? You may. Uh, I still can't be seated. Where are you? Oh, right here. Yes, daughter. Yes. First time I saw you was in March the 21st, 1952. I was, you know, we saw Philip then find Jesus on the 28th. Where is he now? Is he still in Columbus? He's pastoring in Columbus. Yes. He found Jesus in the back seat of my car. And his eyes were open so he could read the small print of the 13th chapter of Hebrews. He could not read the big print. He could not even read the large print. And so Jesus had me to pray, and the third prayer of the power hit my arm like this, and he could read the small print. Let brother the love continue, and be not forgetful to entertain strangers, for thereby some have entertained angels unawares. And he read the, uh, the third verse, the next verse, in small print. I said, let's go in and tell mother about it. Because his father was weeping beside me. And so we went in. And that was the day that Philip met Jesus in my car. Uh, and the 28th day of March 1952. And his eyes were open so he could read the small print of that Bible. Would you like to say a word? It's a the little switch is somewhere there. It's on now, I believe. Maybe. It's on. Yes, it's on. You did meet me in 1949. I was saved in the Wilkinson Revival oh. in 1949 when I was 11 years old, when you were having a revival there. Well, that was before I, I realized, you know, there it was in 1949. Yes, in the fall of 1949. Wasn't that wonderful? We were privileged to see you saved at the age of 11 years. Yes. Three years I before your him. father came over and gave us the trees, 100 yes. trees. Daddy used to take us to your, all your revivals. All of us would get in the car and go wherever you were preaching. <laughs> Says 35 years ago this year, isn't it? 49. Praise the Lord. Oh, we're grateful. Thank you, Jesus. 
so happy that you could be here. I had a wonderful time with Mother and Daddy a few days ago. They came over. I took them to the home. And uh, your father would weep, you know, and wipe the tears. And your mother's face would shine. And uh, I'd show him different things, how Jesus had provided, made way. And he'd just get his handkerchief out, take his glasses off, and wipe tears, give Jesus praise in his quiet, meek way. And when I showed him that log, that log, you know, that was the firewood in your woods. And he let me have a load of wood. James Reed went over to get the wood about uh, 29, 30 years ago. And we brought all the wood out there by the north porch. And this was a beech log, beech. It is uh, the poorest of wood. You can't make anything out of it. All you can do is burn it. And so I went out there to try to pay James for getting it for me. And all once the Holy Ghost came for me, and I said, now that log I will never burn. That was about 29, 30 years ago. See, we've been in the home for 31 years this December. And it was just shortly after the home was built. And uh, I said, now James, pick that up, and we'll take it into the fireplace. I will never burn that log. Well, they were, he's been with me there, and your, wife, your mother was there about 25 years ago. And he's been with me a few times in the 30 years. Uh, and uh, I said, I want you to see this log again. Of course, your father knows what, what wood does after it's cut, you know, a few months to a year. It turns brown or black. And this log, it, and I showed him, I said, you hit it with an axe right there. It just looked like you hit it just a few days ago. And he just got his handkerchief out and he wiped the tears. <laughs> he looked at that log. You see, you see beech, beech log, they, the bark comes off in a few years. And then it decays, and then it just loses its density, and it just all oh, just goes to pieces. Is that right? All the wood pieces. Is that right, yes, sir. woodman? Yes, sir. Well, and so the instant that Jesus told me that I'd keep that log, he locked it. He's never let a drop of moisture get out of it. It looks as though it was just cut. Mr. Brother Morgan, you saw it. Yeah. The other night. It looks as though it was cut yeah, just, just a few days ago. Yeah, yeah just a few days ago. Yeah, when I showed this old as well, about 10 or 12 years ago, he said, Reverend Helm, the only reason I believe it is because you tell me. He said, I tell him wait and I believe it. So this log is a marvel. See, Jesus just told me I'd keep that. And when your father saw it, he wept. Came out of his woods 29 years ago or 30. And there it is. If you get a hold of it, is it heavy? Oh, yes, sir. oh yeah. It's just as heavy as it came through the door. And our door. When you come over, you get to see it someday. Yeah, when you come, you get to see it maybe someday. One of the people from Arlington, Oklahoma, were there. 31 of River Mrs. Ryan's people came. And because of our David Lee being timed to the minute, why well, he came and wakened me, and I, uh, I said, oh, well, they, can't, they can't leave here. So we brought 31 of their people in the house. They took their shoes off <laughs> because our rugs are very delicate, and they were so gracious to be, you know, be thoughtful. And I spoke. Of course, I was very tired. I had been able to sleep. Lots of nights I'd have to get up and listen to the birds at 4 in the morning. Uh, I, I'd pray and pray and listen to the birds. And so I was very weary. And it was for I don't know how many days. And so I spoke to them for over one hour. There was weeping. There was rejoicing. Oh, we had a great time together. It was one of the most important days in our home. It was a tremendous time. And when Tony Huff took that log in his hands, you know, he doesn't talk much. You know what he said? This is something. This is something. When he held that law, because he knew it was clear beyond this world, that God would freeze all the moisture in it and keep it as if it had been cut just a week or two or three ago. So we want to thank Jesus for providing and making a way for us in all the areas because he is the giver of life, saves and sanctifies and heals and keeps and preserves as he leads and directs. Praise the Lord. You may be sitting. No, you can't be seated yet. He said, don't sit down yet. 
well, if we can't sit down, that means we're supposed to stand up. <laughs> and there's something else to do. Let's see what it is. Yeah. I just praise the Lord. Brother Wine, come up just a minute. And uh, this is a very precious servant of Jesus. He's very, uh, very wonderful. Reminds me of Reverend Wright so much. We love you so much. We love you, brother. You're very tender and gracious. Very wonderful. Has the Lord encouraged you today? Oh, yes. Wonderful. It's been precious to be with him. Oh, I'm so thankful. With you. So thankful you could be with us, thank too. Thank you. Yes, sir. Thank you. For his presence. Yes, it's tender. Yeah, it's in my heart. Very tender. He said, with two or three gathered oh, yes. together, there am I in the midst. And so he's right here with us. Oh, yes, he is. The white robe one, the king of glory. Amen. 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 Isn't it marvelous? Isn't it is. Thank you, Father. And Jesus, thank yes, you. It, yes, it touches my heart. So oh, yes, it is. We get into praise. For his Thank love you, and his care. Yes. yes. We're thankful. It's in, so it's in your heart. Mm-hmm. Isn't that Thank wonderful you, that it's in your heart? It's in my heart. Yes. So Jesus will be so merciful yes. here yes. to give us Holy Spirit fellowship yes. through his precious, precious blood. Yeah, we're one. We're one. Jesus. Isn't that great? It's great. Oh, my. It's forever. Great. Oh, yes, we're one. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Oh, the tenderness. The tenderness that he has when his arms come around me. That is in the Holy Ghost. You see, we're having Holy Ghost fellowship. Yes. You know what he said to me? We are one. Mm-hmm. You see, it's so precious in Jesus to have this one. Now he says, I am with thee now. That's what he tells me. Yes. Thank you, Jesus, for our brother, and that you've helped him through all suffering, through all separation, through all trials, tests, accusations, buffeting, and given him strength and faith and rejoicing. Steadfastness in Jesus through the sacred blood of the Lamb. And the work of the Holy Ghost round about the everlasting arms beneath us, sustaining us and taking care of us. Praise the Lord. I'm so thankful for our boys that found you. Yes. Your church is... Uh, the Church of the Brethren. Church of the Anderson. Brethren. Yes, Anderson, Church of the Brethren in Anderson, Anderson, Indiana. Yes. And for the fellowship that Jesus has given. Oh, it's more. Yes. Remember that night I got to shake hands with you at the yes. restaurant, and yes. we had such a great time there. Yes. And in the hospital. In the hospital, yeah. Oh, yes. wow. So yes. thankful for that. Yes. Yes, so grateful. I'm so happy to be here. Yes. God bless you and bless you. Oh, praise the Lord. You're so thankful. Yes. 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 Thank, you. Thank you for this fellowship. I appreciate this. In Jesus. Praise the Lord. Bring the microphone up, son, if you please. Going to ask Brother Ryan, Brother Wine, to uh, have a, a little prayer of thanksgiving for supplication. For whatever is on your heart. Our Father in heaven, we give you thanksgiving that the mansion that has been prepared for us, we can already enter into it. Praise the Lord. You take us into your music room, and we have been there this afternoon praising you. Hallelujah. You take us into your library, and you teach us your word and the hidden secrets of the most high heavenly kingdom. Hallelujah. And you take us into the dining room, and you set us down, and you feed us your word. Oh, it's so precious. Oh, it is. Oh, and we thank you for every morsel of food that you give us. It feeds us yes. in the depths of our being. Yes, Jesus. Oh, and then, Father, you take us into the living room and just fellowship with us yes. and treat us as your children and your friends and your family. Yes, Lord. And thank you, Jesus, that you have provided a bathroom where we can go and wash in your blood yes. to be cleansed, yes. to be thoroughly cleansed. Yes. And then you invite us to come into that intimate room, your bedroom, of that intimate fellowship that's so precious that our words cannot even speak of it. That's a fact. Oh, we thank you in Jesus' name. I'm getting the witness. Hallelujah. 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 Glory. Praise God. Amen. Say, I didn't want you to stop. Oh, we won't stop. We're just going in glory. Oh, thank God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Thank you. Amen. See, he told us not to sit down. I looked at you, operated my heart, so that was the time. See, this is the most he and I have ever been together. Yes. See, we've never talked this much like this. 
Oh. He's, had, he's had a desire to be with me, but he's never pressed to yes, be with me. No. Just as the Lord has led. Yes, sir. I've, I've read your book many times, The Voice. And um, the book that uh, through you, I learned about uh, Brother Watson. I've read many of his books. Yes. Oh, how they bless and help. That touches my heart. Oh, yes. Yeah. Yes. I'm so grateful. Isn't God, our great. Father, great? It's very precious. His very Son precious. is so tender to us. He says, I am with thee. Yes. Praise That's the Lord. Right. Hallelujah. Oh. Praise the Lord for this fellowship in the Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 Oh, we're so grateful. God bless you, dear friend. Thank you, precious. Keep praying for me. I need it very much. Oh, I do. Yes. Thank you. 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 Wasn't this a precious time that God gave us a precious brother and me? Oh my, what, what a sacred hour that was. What a sacred time this was in this close sweetness of Jesus. Those of you that are here, I trust that while the sessions are not on, that you'll be able to get with the people you don't know. See, a lot of our people just fellowship with the people they know. I hope that you get with everyone you don't know. Can you hear me? Are you sure? I hope from now on that, that you get with everyone. You see someone you don't know, make a beeline for them. Have a little talk. You don't know what healings are going to come out of it. All blessings. You don't know what the wonder of it is. Yet. You're going to have a great experience, every one of you, that will get to all the strangers that you see here. Because everyone that's here, we have because Jesus led me directly or indirectly. Amen. They've heard of us. They've read the book or they've been in meetings. So their friend knows about us. And so that got them interested. So they came to the meetings and they're here, directly or indirectly, because of Jesus' guidance. But you see, there's a tendency of dear ones to just fellowship with the ones they know. Right. And uh, I, I want you to get with the people you don't know that you've never seen before. And witness to them. Share with them. See, that's what we need to do. See, most of you, and I can't blame you for this, you want to get with the ones you've had such great times together and you just look forward so much. Oh, we'll get to, uh, just, just get with the ones you don't know for a while. See, it'll be so great if you will. It'll either be great or better or greater or best or more than that. So please do that for me. I know it will not be easy because you want to get with the different ones that you're having great times with. But you can do that a little later. But uh, try to get with each other. Someone that you do not know, one or two or three or four or five, six. And that will be helpful. Praise the Lord. Thank you. Praise the Jesus. Oh Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. Oh Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name. Majestic is your name in all the earth. Oh Lord, our Lord, how 
how majestic is your name in all of the earth. Oh, Lord, we praise your name. Oh, Lord, we magnify. 